In the last video, I did all of the modeling in the 3D space. This is a good way to work as you get accustomed to the tool. But let's open up some more capabilities with the graph display, particularly linking parameters and making controllers. I want to turn my attention to the first two Helix features. In order to make changes that cleanly propagate through the design, some parameters need to be tied together. I'll extract the parameter as an integer from one of the helixes and rename it revolutions. This integer will drive both helixes. This is a value that I'd like to easily control from the 3D space, so I'll switch the toggle to make it a controller. I'll also assign min and max values that make sense for the revolutions. It's important that the handrail stay at the same height as the end of the guardrail. Currently, they're driven by two values that happen to be the same. I need to modify this so they're both being driven by the same number. As you can see, the destination nodes do not need to be the same type of operation. Going back to the helix, I'd like to have a controller for the height between levels in the staircase. This is the pitch of the helix. So I'll extract that integer and call it clearance. I'll connect it in the same way I did the revolutions integer earlier. In the 3D view, let's take a look at the controllers I have so far on the experiment tab. The experiment tab is a great way to play around with different values and see what different combinations of variables would look like in the overall model. One thing that you'll notice about increasing the revolutions of this staircase is that the spacing between the support rails changes. That's because I have the divisions on the helix curve set at a hard value for the entire length. It would be better if there were a certain number of steps per unit length instead. To do this back in the graph display, I just need to add some operators. First, I'll extract the parameter from the divide curve command and then introduce the multiply operator. Multiplying an integer by the revolution variable and using that as the number of divisions for the curve will ensure that the spacing stays constant, no matter how tall or short the stairs are. I'll use the same strategy for the guardrails. Now rather than having a set number of steps and guardrails, the driving force is a ratio depending on how high the stairs go. You'll notice that at the far end of the graph display is our output. Applying color nodes to these will change the color of certain features. In the same way that we had a single integer go to multiple commands, a color operator can go to multiple features, so that we only have to change the color once. To clean up the model, we can hide some of the features that were used in our construction, such as lines, points, and surface extrusions. The hide command is available for both the tree and the 3D area. Let's look at some more major variations. Going back to the experiment tab, I can create a snapshot that records the variables from the controllers. But let's say I want to change some geometry rather than just numerical values. For example, Let's create some variations on the handrails. First, I'd like to try a different profile, a hexagon, instead of a circle. I'll just grab the points along the curve to use as a reference and start the polygon command. When I edit the appropriate sweep feature, I can quickly swap out profiles. To do something a bit more drastic, let's change from a straight sweep for the guardrails to a helical sweep. I'll start the point command and use the along curve option to get a set of points that are based off the original segmented points. 
these new points will be the starting place for the helixes. The helix command lets me use these new points along with all of the lines from the original sweep. I could make the change in this view, but I'd like to show you what's going on in the graph display. Selecting all of the operators that have been created so far, there's a few options to organize them more neatly. I'll zoom in a bit to the sweep command and the new set of helixes. I'm going to leave the hexagonal profile, but change the guide curve with a simple node substitution. Out goes the straight line, in goes the helical curve. These have a larger footprint that starts to protrude from the stairwell, so let's change the size of the hexagon. Now I can just tidy up by hiding the sketches that I've used. Stay tuned for the next video as we dive even deeper into XGen's capabilities.